Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. Before I get started on answering viewer questions for this week, I want to announce I'm going to have a Christmas in July fabric giveaway. So I'll be giving away a lot of Christmas fabric and there will even be enough in there to make six placemats. So keep watching my videos so you can get that information. Now I'm going to be answering questions from Astrid, Zan, Sherry, Cheryl, and CM. Now CM had an interesting question. It was a personal question for me. So I've decided to save that question till last because I think you'll find it a kind of an interesting story. It was a sequence of events that got me to fall into this YouTube channel. So my first question is from Astrid, and she had a request for me to make a pencil case video with elastic on it. It's commonly known as an elastic pencil case. So it's a zipper pouch that you can put your pencils and pins and markers in, but it's also got a long piece of elastic attached at each end and you can wrap it around a notebook. So children can use it for school, you can use it at work, let's say you have a notebook or a memo pad you need to carry around with you to go to different meetings, you can attach that to your notebook that you have to use. So if you are interested in seeing a video on that, leave a comment below because I really would like to know how many of you are interested. Sherry had a fun question. She wants to get started doing paper piecing, but she's a little intimidated by it. And paper piecing is really quite easy. As long as you know how to count, it's going to be quite simple to get started. So let's take a look at a paper piecing pattern. This is a paper piecing pattern. This is about a six inch square and you can make your square any size that you want. So you have three sections here, one, two, and three, but only two stitch lines. So those are the only two lines you stitch on. You would put your two pieces of fabric front sides together on one side and stitch. Then you would unfold the fabric, either finger press or press it with your iron, lay your third piece of fabric over the top of this, stitch, unfold it, and press again. And this is what it looks like when you are done. Now, I don't use uh, this type of paper. I have a much thinner paper that I use and it's really easy to tear this paper off at the back. So let me show you something else you can do with just this pattern right here. If you make four of these blocks and put them together, if you look at this one, you have a pinwheel pattern right here that's going around. But then you also have a second pinwheel pattern right here. So you have a double pinwheel block. And so you can stitch all of these together. Let me show you one more layout. So you can twist and turn these pieces any direction you want. And every time you're going to have something different. So you can even put the, the larger pieces all in the middle like this and create another layout. So paper piecing is a lot of fun and it's really simple. Here are two books that I have purchased and I bought these a very long time ago that are very uh, interesting to use. This one is my favorite because the patterns are really easy and simple. This one is also very complicated. So if you're a beginner, even though I know it says easy on there, I don't really recommend this one. I would try to start with this one here, Easy Paper Piecing by Bonnie K. Browning. 
and I'll have the information below the YouTube screen. I also have several videos on paper piecing, and so just play this video forward until you see a green screen appearing, and there will be links on that screen. My next question came from Zan, who lives in England, and she is a fan of Sunbonnet Sue. And Sunbonnet Sue is on that pillow over my shoulder here. That is a very classic applique quilt block. Now Sunbonnet Sue also has a little companion friend, and he's called Overall Bill. So I'm going to show you in a moment where you can get the information on making Sunbonnet Sue and Overall Bill. Now, Zan's question was, she's interested in putting it into a quilt, but she's not quite sure how to go about doing it. So, when you're putting together any kind of an applique quilt, you first want to select your background fabric and the size of your squares. And then, of course, you would piece those squares together. But before the squares are pieced, you need to apply your overall bill or sunbonnet sue pattern on it. So let's take a look at a product that I use to do that. There are several different ways you can apply the sunbonnet sue pattern to your background fabric. You can either do hand stitching applique stitches which I don't do because it's very time consuming and you really have to love hand sewing. But my favorite way is to do machine applique stitches. And I have many videos on applique sewing. If you're interested in this particular sunbonnet sue and overall bill pattern, then click on the link in the upper right hand corner. This is a product that I use to apply my sunbonnet sue patterns or any applique pattern that I'm doing to my background fabric. And this is a product made by Pellon, light easy steam two, lightweight two-sided pressure sensitive fusible web. And it's really easy to do on the back, which is, this is the back, are really simple instructions for applying it. Then after you've applied it to your fabric, then you need to select your applique stitch. And if you have a computerized sewing machine, you probably have quite a few applique stitches that you can use. Now, if you're interested in learning about applique stitching on your machine, then click on the link in the upper right hand corner and it's a lesson one in doing machine applique. This is my favorite book on Sunbonnet Sue and it's published by Leisure Arts and it's called The Ultimate Sunbonnet Sue Collection. I bought this book off of Amazon and sometimes I've seen it in Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and it has Sunbonnet Sue doing a variety of activities and there's instructions on how to put them on. All the patterns are printed on the inside and it is a fun, fun book. The pillow that you saw behind me at the beginning of the video, I got this out of this book and I do have a video on it. Now to get the pattern you have to buy the book but in the video I show you how to apply it in your, on your fabric. Cheryl recently had a stroke and she's having a difficult time remembering how to read a pattern for making clothing and she wanted to know if I had a video on that. So let's take a look at a pattern. Here is a top clothing pattern and you can buy these. All of the pattern making companies have patterns that are marked easy. And so if you're a beginner, this is what you want to start with. Something that says easy. And McCall's makes them, Butterick, Simplicity, 
those are the really big ones also Joanne fabrics and crafts puts out a book on easy patterns and even Walmart has patterns that are really easy so if you've never bought a pattern before inside of the envelope are not only the pattern pieces themselves that you use to cut out your fabric but there are these instruction sheets and there's a certain language that they use and if you don't know what it means it can be very very overwhelming so I have a video called how to read a pattern and the link is appearing in the upper right hand corner so let's address CM's question on when did I start sewing and what made me start a YouTube channel I started sewing at the age of 12 which it was 50 some years ago <laughs> really a long time and I started taking a class in junior high I did learn a little bit and I continued to sew and by the time I got to high school I signed up for homemaking class and the first half of the year was cooking and then the second half was sewing the cooking part I almost failed it was an absolute disaster and I'm a disaster in the kitchen to this day but sewing I excelled at and by the end of my senior year I had won the silver thimble award and I still have that thimble somewhere one of these days I'll dig it out and I'll find the picture of me modeling my clothes back then I was a lot skinnier my mother encouraged me to major in homemaking in college because they didn't have just sewing major back then so again I failed miserably at the cooking so I fell out of that and then I went on became a secretary then I had a very short-lived career as a dancer which I just loved but I was just very mediocre so I didn't really excel at that came for a large corporation and I was the computer desktop user support person and I did that for a while and while I was doing that I went back to college and got my degree I got a job at a community college in which I taught physical education so I did that for about 12 years and then by that time I was ready to retire but I was really hesitant to retire because I thought what am I going to do when I retire? I don't want to just sit around and watch TV. I've got to be busy. And I loved teaching. But my family really encouraged me to retire. And I did. And the first few weeks of my retirement, I was just lost. So I decided to go into my sewing area and just clean it up. And I got it all organized. And I got into quilting. And I just loved it. A year later I had to go in for back surgery and it took me a very long time to recover and just as I was getting on the road to recovery about a little over a year later I had a spinal cord injury which was a major life-changing event for me I couldn't use my right hand and I couldn't walk so there again I went on this long road to recovery I felt very useless I needed help with everything and then one day I was watching a TV show and the commentator was interviewing people who had YouTube channels and he was interviewing a young lady who had a cooking show well I knew I couldn't teach cooking because remember I'm a disaster in the kitchen but a light bulb went off in my head I thought I will teach people how to sew that will make me feel useful again and I didn't care if I was successful I just wanted to teach and so that's how I got started it was a very rocky road I didn't make any money the first year it took me about seven months to get a hundred subscribers which is a big deal back then when I started it. Getting 100 subscribers, you had really made it. 
And then eventually, of course, many of you know, I went on to hit over a hundred thousand subscribers. But I really enjoy teaching. I still don't make much money. And by the way, this is another question I get asked a lot by family and friends is, do you make money on YouTube? And I have to laugh and I said, well, you're paid by advertising. The longer you can keep your viewer on, the more ads YouTube will run. I hope some of these answers helped uh, many of you out. Remember, if you have a question or comment on any of my videos, please leave the comment below your YouTube screen. Also below the YouTube screen are all product information that I talked about in this video. For instance, the Pellon fusible interfacing and the book that I also recommend. If you like this video, please click on thumbs up and also click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on that little bell and then enter your email address so that you'll receive future email notifications about my latest video. If you don't seem to be receiving those notifications, go to your cell phone, click on settings, and set notifications in the on position. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny. Thanks again for coming by. See you next time. Happy sewing!